Hey everybody, Josh RV Nerd with Bish's RV down here at Surveyor today. Got a crack at one of their newer floor plans. This is the 253 Rear Living, and it's also the first time I've ever had a chance to record a member of their Upper Grand Surveyor series. So we're gonna see what's a little bit different on a common surveyor versus a grand surveyor, as well as the fact that kind of what makes this floor plan stand out, because there are certainly some other layouts very similar to this. It's not necessarily the most uh, a, a, a totally unique original concept, but but every manufacturer always finds a way to execute something a little bit differently. And whoever builds this floor plan, they always do like this 45 degree cutaway angle countertop that makes it largely non-functional. They did not do that here. They gave this thing about an acre of countertop space that is just prep city central, brother. Um, it is carpetless, it is ventless flooring, it's easy cleaning even with a central vacuum that only like three other brands in this class have, a very uh, uncommon feature in lightweight trailers. And that's another thing, this should fit very nicely with a lot of half ton towability. Looking at the total length and the GVW falls well within, I think, late model tow package half ton parameters. Um, the ceiling's extra tall, which is something I really like when I go standing in the shower. And one of the things here, I think somebody might look at this and say, the sofa and the dinette are in the wrong position. One of the really cool things about Surveyor is anywhere that they offer a dinette, you could also get a hide-a-bed or a theater seat. So you actually have the ability to throw the double dinofa in this. And if you notice the rear wall dino, or rear wall sofa, I guess a dino if you throw a table in front of it. But that thing has either the population control armrest or the flip up cuddle compliant armrest. It's kind of dealer's choice on that one. So I, I kind of be curious to know as we go through this, like what sort of seating arrangement uh, would you put in this? And what do you think about it overall? Because it feels like they really kind of looked at anybody else who's making something like this and they really kind of cherry pick just the high features and overall kind of, kind of like the end result, especially the storage around the bed. It is fantastic. So like I said, it's not that this is necessarily an original floor plan. It's that they brought a couple of their own little surveyor twists to it. And it's kind of funny because in the RV industry, when two manufacturers build a similar floor plan, it's like somebody feels like the other, like the second manufacturer has done something wrong. But like, think of like Ford, Chevy, Dodge, not to mention all kinds of different import brands. How many different like, SUVs are there that are basically doing the exact same thing. The thing is they all are similar and they're all doing the big things that really matter. It's just a matter of the little nuances and differences that each of them have. Um, based on the feedback that I've seen on some previous videos, and feel free to comment and chime in if you feel this way, I think a lot of people are going to say the dinette and the theater seat are in the wrong position and they should be flip-flop because I don't want to sit at a dinette to watch TV. Now, the TV can pivot, but it's still, you'll see later in the video, it's still not going to be a perfect, direct, no neck wrecker entertainment center. Cool thing with Surveyor, though, like I said, anywhere that you have a dinette, you could put a hide -a bed or a theater seat. So you could actually have a two sofa version of this floor plan. And I would be kind of curious, armed with that knowledge, does that kind of change your feeling and or uh, opinion of this layout, assuming you had already had a pre preconceived notion of it. Now, I like the accent light over the side. I also like that. It's just a, just a common soft white, you know, because if I get in here and I turn off like all the, oops, um, oop, I'm, I'm an idiot. Which, which light is it? Which light is it? There we go. Oh, oh, wow. Okay. Well, I just learned something today. The accent light switch and the main light switch are all on the same switch. They're not switched separately. However, if you really wanted to, you could actually turn off all these lights uh, individually. So kind of keep all that in mind. Well, hey, we learned something today. I won't claim to ever know it all. I'm no authority. I'm just some dad bod chunky nerd doing this stuff. Anyway, floor flush, carpetless slide, which considering the refrigerator and the pantry are mounted way back into that super deep slide out. That's important. Now, one of the cool things here is because they have a taller ceiling, that should mean the average bear does not need to worry about bumping their head when they're trying to get to the fridge or the pantry. Case in point, I'm a little over six foot tall. Now, I can tell you by looking at this, I think my head is going to bump it, but I'm a little bit taller than the average bear. The average American is about 5'8" and the average American is going to fit into this thing without bumping their head. Now, if you're a little bit taller like me, 
chances are you just reflexively, instinctively duck all the time. I'm not saying that that should be considered a perfect workaround. What I'm saying is that this should work for the vast majority of people because they went six foot nine with the ceiling instead of six and a half on the wall. If like a lot of brands will do that vaulted ceiling, but most of those are only a six and a half foot sidewall. A taller sidewall means taller slides, taller shower, bigger cabinets. I personally prefer a six foot nine linear interior ceiling, even though it is still vaulted outside. Uh, I, I prefer this over a six and a half foot wall with a ceiling vault. I don't dislike that. This is my personal preference the way they've done it though. Now, while we're over here, that is the gas electric two-way optional fridge. The standard would be a 10 cubic foot, 12 volt DC compressor. Um, there are a lot of manufacturers who are beginning to phase out the two-way gas electric option. I do not know what Surveyor might do in the future. I only know what they're doing at the time of this filming right now for 2023 models. I do like having this one plugged in, though, and having just the, the visual element of the, the toenail toaster, uh, the electric space heater going on over here. Now, that thing can crank out some serious heat. Actually, uh, I, I, I tell you what. Um, if you have the RV winterized, chances are this can provide most of the heat to the RV if you give it some time to go. But you might notice like in that cabinet side over there, they do have side ducted heating, which leaves the floor ventless, uh, which means fewer cuts in the floor, which means fewer Skittle collectors, which means a bunch of things. Now, I've talked about how their central vacuum system includes all the hoses, but I don't think I ever bothered pulling them out before. And I don't think it's like, whoa, wow, that's a game changer. Now that you see it, I just thought it'd be neat to kind of include that extra sort of stuff right there. Now, one thing I noticed, uh, when you look at the kitchen, it looks nice. And I mean, again, be, they, they didn't cut the countertop back right here. Most manufacturers angle the entertainment center and the countertop uh, toward the rear sofa. And there's benefits to that for entertainment purposes, but it really messes with your, your countertop prep space. What I uh, was getting at, though, is you don't see any household outlets until you start looking under the overhead cabinets. But the thing is, they have five sets of household outlets up here. And I would be kind of curious to know what you think. Now, you have a true pocket sliding privacy door right there for the bathroom. So uh, if you look at this, where the door slides shut, it, the wall is not thick enough to, to mount an outlet down here. However, if you look in this corner... There's two sets of outlets dead on top of one another. My personal nerd preferred pick, take that one set of outlets and put it down there because the pocket door probably stops about here. So there should be room to do that. And I'd be kind of curious to know, what do you think of that idea? Do you think that's a good idea or a bad idea? Which sounds, anybody remember Animaniacs? Good idea, bad idea? That was, oh, I love, I love that kind of, if you ever wonder like what's wrong with my head, all you need to understand is that I grew up watching Animaniacs, and that pretty much explains everything else. <laughs> now, when you're standing, the window coverage doesn't look amazing, but when you're sitting down and you're at this level, suddenly you see the window coverage is actually pretty good in this one, especially on the campsite of the RV, which for the most part, I think is where you want your window coverage. Now, on that note, um, the entry doors have full viewing windows. They are shade prepped. They don't include the shade from the factory. That is a thing that you could get like off Amazon though. And literally it requires no like tools or screwdriver. There's just these little clips that you just click lock it down to top to bottom. Done, son. It's easy. And you can choose whether to have it slide from the top down or from the bottom up. Whatever works for you. And I want to give them some credit. Um, I, I like... Uh, a lot of things they're doing here. And there's some things that they're still doing that a lot of other manufacturers have quit doing. Like, if you look up here, you will notice their overhead cabinets still have struts. And here in the Grand Surveyor series, uh, you're getting the blackout roller shades. You may have also noticed the electric heating fireplace in this one. That's another part of the Grand Surveyor that you don't get in the standard Surveyor package. Um, that pantry over there, again, very nice and deep. Uh, tons of storage going on around here. You've got that countertop extension. Uh, you know, not a massive amount of drawer space, but I think enough drawer space that overall, I think they did uh, a pretty darn good job. Now, as I mentioned, that TV can pivot around. Uh, if you're sitting back here at the theater seat, 
it's not a perfect viewing experience. That is why I personally think rather than a dinette, I would probably get some kind of free floating table and I would uh, outfit this RV with a second sofa instead of a dinette over here. But that's just my two cents. I get on a rainy day, it is nice just to have a dedicated table, sit down, play some cards, board games, dinner, whatever. Like, there's benefits to it. I'm not saying uh, a dinette is stupid. I don't, I don't think that. I grew up at a dinette in a camper. Um, but different strokes, different folks. It depends on how you camp. Uh, big mirror for their medicine cabinet. Uh, part of the reason is it overhangs past the medicine cabinet section to give you a little toothbrush holder, which I think is kind of cool. Um, backing up here, your control panel? for your, your system stuff. Now, like this RV actually in a sense has two control panels. You've got an electric control panel for like your uh, slides, awnings, and lights by the door where I was fumbling with the switches earlier. And this would be like your plumbing control panel where you could uh, activate your gas or electric sides of your water heater. Um, or if outfitted with the optional holding tank heaters, that's where the switch to activate those could be located. Porcelain foot flush stool. And man, there's some serious space around that. And similarly, with that taller ceiling, we also have ourselves a, uh, a shower that is fit for some taller people as well. The shower being a little bit taller, actually, in clearance than even the slide out that we saw earlier. I don't have the hard dimension, but again, I'm a little over six foot using myself as a reference point there. And we are almost finished with the inside here then we're going to close the slide for road mode yes sir get a little look out that front windshield inset into the nose cap this is a 60 by 80 true queen bed which is nice so you, uh you know if you feel like replacing the mattress which i i ain't, I ain't gonna lie the mattress that comes from the factory on these folks you're gonna be replacing it but i have yet to find a single bed from any manufacturer that has a mattress that everybody says is great so I kind of don't fault them for doing what they're doing. Um, I would like some kind of privacy shade in the bedroom door. Like maybe I can live without it in the living room, but in the bedroom I want it. In case you're curious, bedroom door, you see that red switch, that does lock. So you have a choice between uh, sleeping alone and, well, not sleeping alone. I, I, I don't want to say sleeping with friends, even though I just said it, because now that says wrong. I keep stumbling into that in, in my videos, and you would think that one of these days, I would learn not to say it, <laughs> but no, I keep saying the stupidest things possible. <sighs> what am I missing in this bedroom? Oh, you have the same roller shades here on these windows that you have in the living room. You've also got your TV hookups over here on this wall. And they're over there because your sliding privacy door could basically, you know, occupy some of this space and it wouldn't really leave you enough room for a decent TV or anything like that. By the way, your converter panel, your fuse box, it's up here in the bedroom and with a direct entry bedroom door, one that's going to help us for travel access for, for bathroom and for bedroom, but it means you can always get to your fuse box if for some reason like the slide fuse blows or whatever the case may be. Now, uh, bedroom storage in here, I, I think Surveyor I, I, I like how Imagine does their bed storage, but look at this. I think Surveyor might do everything they do, and then maybe just a, it's a touch more. It's, it's close. That's all I'm saying. I, I think they both do a very good job of their bedroom storage overall. Now, down in those little hidden side pockets, there's actually some household outlets in there as well. So you have household outlets on the front side of the wardrobes down by the floor with USB plugs, and then household outlets only in the little boxing back there. So... Overall, I'm a, I'm a big fan of how they, they do all that stuff. Where it might be a problem, though, I get that some people don't like walk through bathrooms because it can kind of block and lock the RV off. You're going to run into kind of the same thing when we come to travel mode. And here's what I'm talking about. But it, the, the thing is, you can get to everything in this RV, but it is going to require both doors. So I'm going to give it credit, but maybe it's going to be more of a B plus than an A minus. Like if you notice, you can reach right in here. You can get to the fridge. You can get to the sink, the drawers. Um, as I uh, back up and work my way down the steps blind and backwards here, which I'm getting pretty good at at this point. I'm kind of surprised I haven't fallen and busted my backside, although now that I've said it, guess what's going to happen next video. If you don't see me make some videos for two weeks, it's because I fell walking backwards down some stairs and I'm currently in traction or something like that. You know, you get the idea. Anyway, so... The, the uh, you know, if you're looking for a snack-tastic travel stop, you want to use door number one. But if you're looking to take a nap or take a crap, well, that would be door number hmm, two. Now, first of all, talking towing on one of this, I kind of mentioned that when we began here. Uh, if you look at the total length of the RV, 
if you look at the GVW, so a, a lot of people, when they're trying to sell you an RV, they only talk about the empty dry weight of the RV, but that's a recipe for getting yourselves in some danger. Uh, because legally, you're required to be able to handle the GVW of the RV, meaning fully laden, maximum cargo. And if you look at that on here, I think it still falls nicely within half ton towable. It's not too long. It's not too heavy. It almost looks narrow body. Some of these surveyors do because they are extra tall inside and that full polar white stark body. It does make them look a little bit uh, narrow, but they're not. It's a standard eight foot body. So, uh, you know, it, it gives you all the normal room anybody else would have, plus a little extra interior height or shower height. Now down here in the belly of the beast, we are enclosed. We're forced air heated. Um, there is an option for tank heaters, and it, I tell you, just knowing this industry the way that I do, I'll be really shocked if that doesn't end up standardized, and frankly, I ain't going to be real upset if it does. Um, black tank flush over here, uh, I, I just kind of want you to get to, you know, see where that's all located more than anything. I think you get the idea. If, I guess if you don't know what a black tank flush is, leave me a comment, and I'd be happy to answer. By the way, if you're new, please don't be afraid to ask questions. Like, don't, if you're like, hey, this might be a silly question, maybe you feel silly answering it, but or asking it, but we were all brand new at this at some point. Ask those questions. I'll do my best to help you. It's okay. Um, now, in the background, we have a Surveyor Legend, which for the longest time, uh, for a couple of years, they weren't building any of the Grand Surveyors just because the Legend series was so overwhelmingly popular. I'm really glad to see the Grand series coming back out here. Obviously, you can notice one of the differences. The Grand is going to give us that three-quarter nose cap. One of the other things is an available option, and that uh, would be the power corner stabilizers. Now, the RV we're looking at is not outfitted with those, but it could be uh, if you were so inclined. The fireplace inside and the roller shades inside, again, uh, other aspects of the Grand Surveyor that the Surveyor Legend doesn't have, but structurally, for the most point, uh, about 99% of the amenities are you know, a match for one another. Magnet holdbacks and slam latches on both sides are nice little details there. And that box is uh, the box for the griddle that we're going to see. I kind of le left it in there to give you a sort of a, a size reference because that is, I mean, you know, if uh, Clark W. Griswold's Aunt Edna croaks on the next family trip, you could shove her in there and you wouldn't have to strap her to the top of the Queen's wa or Wagon Queen Family Truckster. That's the name of that. Eight headlights <laughs> and if you think you hate it now, just wait till you drive it. Best tagline I've ever seen in a movie. The awning on this is some feet long. I don't remember how, I, I, crap, I forgot how many feet long it is. It's big, it's, it's, it's many feet long. It's a many feet, foot long awning. Um, very nice, very nice big many feet long awning space. This really fell apart, didn't it? Moving on, <coughs> nailed it first try. The little uh, corner kitchen. There's a chunk of the countertop you can't get to from the inside. So they open it up from the outside and they gave you this little camp kitchen. And when a lot of people look at this, a lot of people look at just what it is, but they don't ask why it is. So it's just a little dog dish dump sink. And you see how you've got the little garden hose sprayer attachment on it where you can spray your wife fellas and then run inside, you better deadbolt the door quick because she's gonna come after you with the uh, Forest River spatula and she's gonna split your head open like a gas station murder hobo will come and get you. So keep that in mind, but uh, never mind all that. They make the cooker slide to the side and the, the, grill, the griddle is removable, but the griddle slides off to the side so that while you're cooking, you can still get in and out of the fridge without singeing your arm hairs, which is nice. Now, as the uh, little stickers here indicate, this says uh, protected by TST, which I can't even spell, but basically tire pressure monitoring. Um, so while you're going down the road, there's a separate monitor included with the survey, no additional cost, no installation required, uh, that will you know tell you kind of in real time, like what's the tire pressure going on with your tires here? They are running import tires. Um, the, uh, I, I would not be surprised, kind of like the, the holding tanks, with the, the trends that I'm seeing in the RV industry, I won't be surprised if they end up adopting good years for the 2024 season, but that's just kind of a, a little bit of a theory for now. We'll see if that ends up panning out. Now, let's talk back up camera prep. Uh, a lot of RVs have it, and some RVs, they're, it almost seems like they're specifically prepped for only one variety of camera. The fact is, all that's really back there is just uh, a power line and you could pop that housing off and pop on just about any. So like, you know, if you don't like a Furion, if you want to go with a halo view or something like that, you can put just about any type you want on there. Now, one thing I'm wondering, 
I wonder if this has one or two sewer outlets, and I think, ooh, I think we're gonna be happy with the answer. And I was correct. It is a single-headed sewer monster. It is located right at the edge of the slide. You're kind of reaching under the slide to get to it, but not really, kind of, but not really. I guess it's just the best way I can describe it. A um, couple other quick little notes for this uh, on this RV for you. Anywhere you see fiberglass, you got Asdell on this. So that's kind of a, a nice little peace of mind factor. If you don't know what Asdell is, leave me a comment. I'll, I've got, or I've got videos on that if I remember to link it. And if I don't, leave me a comment. Tell me to remember to link my video, you dummy. And I'd be happy to do that. And if you use those words, that's okay. Up on the roof right now, we've also got an 80 watt solar panel, which is just being real. It's a battery tender. Now this RV that we're looking at is outfitted with the optional gas electric two-way fridge. Um, if you're going to be doing some boondocking, that 80 watts of panel should frankly be enough just to keep your lights and your fans running. Now, if you're going to be running uh, furnace fans, that'll that'll eat a battery fast. But just common lights and fans, like bathroom fans, it'll be okay. Um, I would like personally to see some kind of expanded solar options on these. And I'd sort of like to hear from you, what do you think should be a minimum standard solar package uh, available on one of these? Uh, let's see if we can feed some input back to the factory on that. So once again, Thank you for tuning in, ladies and gentlemen. If you appreciate the information we're giving you here, showing you the, the cool things with maybe the stuff that you might not like, helping you find your second camper the first time, hit that subscribe button and catch us on the next one. And again, let Surveyor know what they're doing, what you like on them, and what you'd like to see changed. And who knows what kind of updates they'll be able to roll into some future models with a little bit of feedback. Uh, short of that, check the link in the video description to see where we have one in stock and what we're asking. And until next time, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.